New driving theory test. Practice test 5. Question 1. What does this sign mean? A. Rend of motorway. B. End of restriction. C. Free recovery ends. D. Lane ends ahead. Correct answer. B. End of restriction. Explanation. Temporary restrictions on motorways are shown on signs that have flashing amber lights. At the end of the restriction, you'll see this sign without any flashing lights. 2. You're waiting to come out of a side road. Why should you look carefully for motorcycles? A. Motorcycles are usually faster than cars. B. Motorcycles can easily be hidden behind obstructions. C. Motorcycles have right of way. D. Police patrols often use motorcycles. Correct answer. B. Motorcycles can easily be hidden behind obstructions. Explanation. If you're waiting to emerge from a side road, look carefully for motorcycles. They can be difficult to see. Be especially careful if there are parked vehicles or other obstructions restricting your view. 3. What does this sign mean? A. End of bus lane. B. End of motorway. C. No motor vehicles. D. No through road. Correct answer. B. End of motorway. Explanation. When you leave the motorway, make sure that you check your speedometer. You may be going faster than you realize. Slow down and look for speed limit signs. 4. What should you do when you're joining a motorway? A. Give way to traffic already on the motorway. B. Slow to a stop before joining the motorway. C. Stop at the end of the acceleration lane. D. Use the hard shoulder. Correct answer. A give way to traffic already on the motorway. Explanation. You should give way to traffic already on the motorway. Where possible, traffic may move over to let you in, but don't force your way into the traffic stream. Traffic could be traveling at high speed. So try to match your speed to filter in without affecting the traffic flow. 5. You're approaching a busy junction. What should you do when, at the last moment, you realize you're in the wrong lane? A. Continue in that lane. B. Force your way across. C. Stop until the area has cleared. D. Use clear arm signals to cut across. Correct answer. A. Continue in that lane. Explanation. There are times when road markings are obscured by queuing traffic, or you're unsure which lane to use. If, at the last moment, you find you're in the wrong lane, don't cut across or bully other drivers to let you in. Follow the lane you're in and find somewhere safe to turn around and rejoin your route. 6. You're about to overtake. What should you do when you see this sign? A. Hold back until you can see clearly ahead. B. Move to the right to get a better view. C. Overtake the other driver as quickly as possible. D. Switch your headlights on before overtaking. Correct answer, a hold back until you can see clearly ahead. Explanation, you won't be able to see any hazards that might be hidden in the dip. As well as oncoming traffic the dip may conceal. Cyclists, horse riders, parked vehicles, pedestrians, on the road. 7. What does this sign mean? A. Adverse camber. B. Steep hill downwards. C. Steep hill upwards. D. Uneven road. Correct answer. B. Steep hill downward. Explanation. This sign gives you an early warning that the road ahead will slope downhill. Prepare to alter your speed and gear. Looking at the sign from left to right will show you whether the road slopes uphill or downhill. 8. How would you react to drivers who appear to be inexperienced? A. Be patient and prepare for them to react more slowly. B. Flash your headlights to indicate that it's safe for them to proceed. C. Overtake them as soon as possible. D. Sound your horn to warn them of your presence. Correct answer. A. Be patient and prepare for them to react more slowly. Explanation. Learners might not have confidence when they first start to drive.
Allow them plenty of room and don't react adversely to their hesitation. We all learn from experience, but new drivers will have had less practice in dealing with all the situations that might occur. 9. What does this sign mean? A. Amber signal out of order. B. New traffic lights ahead. C. Temporary traffic lights ahead. D. Traffic lights out of order. Correct answer, D. Traffic lights out of order. Explanation. You might see this sign where he traffic lights are out of order. Proceed with caution, as nobody has priority at the junction. 10. Before overtaking a large vehicle, you should keep well back. Why is this? A. To get the best view of the road ahead. B. To give acceleration space to overtake quickly on blind bends. C. To leave a gap in case the vehicle stops and rolls back. D. To offer other drivers a safe gap if they want to overtake you. Correct answer. A. To get the best view of the road ahead. Explanation. When following a large vehicle, keep well back. If you're too close, you won't be able to see the road ahead and the driver of the long vehicle might not be able to see you in their mirrors. 11. You've just passed these warning lights. What hazard would you expect to see next? A. A level crossing with no barrier. B. A school crossing patrol. C. An ambulance station. D. An opening bridge. Correct answer. B. A school crossing patrol. Explanation. These lights warn that children may be crossing the road to a nearby school. Slow down so that you're ready to stop if necessary. 12. By how much can stopping distances increase in icy conditions? A. 5 times. B. 10 times. C. 3 times. D. 2 times. Correct answer. B. 10 times. Explanation. Tire grip is greatly reduced in icy conditions. For this reason, you need to allow up to 10 times the stopping distance you would allow on dry roads. 13. What does this sign mean? A. Change to the left lane. B. Contraflow system. C. Leave at the next exit. D. One-way street. Correct answer. B. Contraflow system. Explanation. If you use the right-hand lane in a contraflow system, You'll be traveling with no permanent barrier between you and the oncoming traffic. Observe speed limits and keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. 14. You keep well back while waiting to overtake a large vehicle. What should you do if a car moves into the gap? A. Drop back further. B. Flash your headlights. C. Sound your horn. D. Start to overtake. Correct answer, A. Drop back further. Explanation, sometimes your separation distance is shortened by a driver moving into the gap you've allowed. When this happens, react positively. Stay calm and drop further back to re-establish a safe following distance. 15. A horse rider is in the left-hand lane approaching a roundabout. Where should you expect the rider to go? A. In any direction. B. Straight ahead. C. To the left. D. To the right. Correct answer. A. In any direction. Explanation. Horses and their riders move more slowly than other road users. They might not have time to cut across heavy traffic to take up a position in the right-hand lane. For this reason, a horse and rider may approach a roundabout in the left-hand lane even though they're turning right. 16. You've just gone through deep water. What should you do to make sure your brakes are working properly? A. Accelerate and keep to a high speed for a short time. B. Avoid using the brakes at all for a few miles. C. Go slowly while gently applying the brakes. D. Stop for at least an hour to allow them time to dry. Correct answer. C. Go slowly while gently applying the brakes. Explanation. Water on the brakes will act as a lubricant, causing them to work less efficiently. Using the brakes lightly as you go along will quickly dry them out. 17. What's the reason for the yellow crisscross lines painted on the road here? 
A. To mark out an area for trams only. B. To mark the entrance lane to a car park. C. To prevent queuing traffic from blocking the junction on the left. D. To warn you of the tram lines crossing the road. Correct answer. C. To prevent queuing traffic from blocking the junction on the left. Explanation. Yellow box junctions, like this, are often used where it's busy. Their purpose is to keep the junction clear for crossing traffic. Don't enter the painted area unless your exit is clear. The one exception is when you're turning right and are only prevented from doing so by oncoming traffic or by other vehicles waiting to turn right. 18. At a puffin crossing, which color follows the green signal? A. Flashing amber. B. Flashing green. C. Steady amber. D. Steady red. Correct answer. C. Steady amber. Explanation. Puffin crossings have infrared sensors that detect when pedestrians are crossing and hold the red traffic signal until the crossing is clear. The use of a sensor means there's no flashing amber phase as there is with a pelican crossing. 19. What hazard should you be aware of when traveling along this street? A. Children running out between vehicles. B. Glare from the sun. C. Lack of road markings. D. Large goods vehicles. Correct answer. A. Children running out between vehicles. Explanation. On roads where there are many parked vehicles, you might not be able to see children between parked cars and they may run out into the road without looking. 20. What should you do when you meet an oncoming vehicle on a single track road? A. Carry out an emergency stop. B. Reverse back to the main road. C. Stop at a passing place. D. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Correct answer. C. Stop at a passing place. Explanation. Take care when using single track roads. It can be difficult to see around bends. Because of hedges or fences, so expect to meet oncoming vehicles. Drive carefully and be ready to pull into a or stop opposite a passing place where you can pass each other safely. 21. When are you allowed to stop on a motorway? A. When you need to use a mobile telephone. B. When you need to walk and get fresh air. C. When you wish to pick up hitchhikers. D. When you're signaled to do so by flashing red lights. Correct answer. D. When you're signaled to do so by flashing red lights. Explanation. You must stop if overhead gantry signs show flashing red lights above every lane on the motorway. If any of the other lanes doesn't show flashing red lights or a red cross, you may move into that lane and continue if it's safe to do so. 22. Where does this marking normally appear on a road? A. Just before a giveaway sign. B. Just before a no entry sign. C. Just before a no through road sign. D. Just before a stop sign. Correct answer, A just before a giveaway, sign. Explanation, this road marking means you should give way to traffic on the main road. It might not be used at junctions where there isn't much traffic. However, if there's a double broken line across the junction, the giveaway rules still apply. 23. Where will you see these red and white markers? A. Approaching a concealed level crossing. B. Approaching a concealed speed limit sign. C. Approaching the end of a dual carriageway. D. Approaching the end of a motorway. Correct answer. A. Approaching a concealed level crossing. Explanation. If there's a bend just before a level crossing, you may not be able to see the level crossing barriers or waiting traffic. These signs give you an early warning that you may find these hazards just around the bend. 24. You see a pedestrian with a dog wearing a yellow or burgundy coat. What does this indicate? A. The pedestrian is a dog trainer. B. The pedestrian is color blind. C. The pedestrian is deaf. D. The pedestrian is elderly. Correct answer. C. The pedestrian is deaf. Explanation. Dogs trained to help deaf people have a yellow or burgundy coat. 
If you see one, you should take extra care, as the pedestrian may not be aware of vehicles approaching. 25. A casualty isn't breathing normally. Chest compressions should be given. At what rate? A. 10 per minute. B. 120 per minute. C. 240 per minute. D. 60 per minute. Correct answer. B. 120 per minute. Explanation. If a casualty isn't breathing normally, chest compressions may be needed to maintain circulation. Place two hands on the center of the chest and press down hard and fast around 5 to 6 centimeters in about twice a second. 26. What does this sign mean? A. Ancient monument ahead. B. Low bridge ahead. C. Traffic danger spot ahead. D. Tunnel ahead. Correct answer. D. Tunnel ahead. Explanation. When approaching a tunnel, switch on your dipped headlights. Be aware that your eyes might need to adjust to the sudden darkness. You may need to reduce your speed. 27. At an incident, it's important to look after any casualties. What should you do with them when the area is safe? A. Ask them how it happened. B. Give them something to eat. C. Keep them where they are. D. Move them away from the vehicles. Correct answer. C. Keep them where they are. Explanation. When the area is safe and there's no danger from other traffic or fire, it's better not to move casualties. Moving them may cause further injury. 28. Which of these, if allowed to get low, could cause you to crash? A. Anti-freeze level. B. Battery water level. C. Brake fluid level. D. Radiator coolant level. Correct answer. C. Brake fluid level. Explanation. You should carry out frequent checks on all fluid levels but particularly brake fluid. As the brake pads or shoes wear down, the brake fluid level will drop. If it dropped below the minimum mark on the fluid reservoir, Air could enter the hydraulic system and lead to a lot of braking efficiency or even complete brake failure. 29. You're turning left on a slippery road. What should you do if the back of your vehicle slides to the right? A. Brake firmly and don't turn the steering wheel. B. Brake firmly and steer to the left. C. Steer carefully to the left. D. Steer carefully to the right. Correct answer, D. Steer carefully to the right. Explanation. To correct a skid, you need to steer into it. However, be careful not to overcorrect with too much steering, as this may cause a skid in the opposite direction. Skids don't just happen, they're caused usually by the driver. Factors increasing the likelihood of a skid include the condition of the vehicle, especially its tires, and the road and weather conditions. 30. What should you do when parking your vehicle facing downhill? A. Park close to the bumper of another car. B. Park with two wheels on the curb. C. Turn the steering wheel away from the curb. D. Turn the steering wheel towards the curb. Correct answer. D. Turn the steering wheel towards the curb. Explanation. Turning the wheels towards the curb will allow them to act as a chalk preventing any forward movement of the vehicle. It will also help to leave your car in gear or select park if you have an automatic. 31. You're driving in a built-up area that has traffic calming measures. What should you do when you approach a road hump? A. Check your mirror and slow down. B. Move across to the left-hand side of the road. C. Stop and check both pavements. D. Wait for any pedestrians to cross. Correct answer. A. Check your mirror and slow down. Explanation. Many towns have road humps as part of traffic calming measures designed to slow down traffic. Reduce your speed when driving over them. If you go too fast, you could lose control or damage your car. Look out for pedestrians or cyclists while you're driving in these areas. 32. What does the solid white line at the side of the road indicate? A. Cycle path. B. Edge of the carriageway. C. Footpath on the left. D. 
traffic lights ahead. Correct answer, the edge of the carriageway. Explanation, the continuous white line shows the edge of the carriageway. It can be especially useful when visibility is restricted, such as at night or in bad weather. It's discontinued in some places, for example, at junctions, lay BYS entrances or other openings. 33. You're driving past a line of parked cars. You notice a ball bouncing out into the road ahead. What should you do? A. Continue driving at the same speed and flash your headlights. B. Continue driving at the same speed and sound your horn. C. Slow down and be prepared to stop for children. D. Stop and wave the children across to fetch their ball. Correct answer. C. Slow down and be prepared to stop for children. Explanation. Beware of children playing in the street and running out into the road. If a ball bounces out from the pavement, slow down and be prepared to stop. Don't encourage anyone to retrieve it. Other road users may not see your signal and you might lead a child into a dangerous situation. 34. You're driving on a motorway and have to slow down quickly due to a hazard ahead. How can you warn drivers behind the hazard? A. Flash your headlights. B. Sound your horn. C. Switch on your hazard warning lights. D. Switch on your headlights. Correct answer. C. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Explanation. Using your hazard warning lights, as well as your brake lights, will give following traffic an extra warning of the problem ahead. Only use them for long enough for your warning to be seen. 35. A cycle lane, marked by a solid white line, is in operation. What does this mean for car drivers? A. The lane may be used for parking your car. B. The lane may be used when necessary. C. You may drive in the lane at any time. D. You mustn't drive in that lane. Correct answer. D. You mustn't drive in that lane. Explanation. Leave the lane free for cyclists. At other times, when the lane isn't in operation, you should still be aware that there may be cyclists about. Give them plenty of room as you pass and allow for their movement from side to side. Especially in windy weather or on a bumpy road. 36. What's most likely to distract you while you're driving? A. Checking the mirrors. B. Using a mobile phone. C. Using the demisters. D. Using the windscreen wipers. Correct answer. B. Using a mobile phone. Explanation. It's easy to be distracted. Planning your journey before you set off is important. A few sensible precautions are to tune your radio to stations in your area of travel, take planned breaks, and plan your route. Except for emergencies, it's illegal to use a handheld mobile phone while driving. Even using a hands-free kit can severely distract your attention. 37. Anti-lock brakes reduce the chances of skidding. When is this particularly important? A. When you're braking during normal driving. B. When you're braking in an emergency. C. When you're driving down steep hills. D. When you're driving on good road surfaces. Correct answer. B. When you're braking in an emergency. Explanation. The anti-lock braking system, ABS, will operate when the brakes have been applied harshly and the wheels are about to lock, such as during an emergency. ABS will reduce the likelihood of your car skidding, but it isn't a substitute for safe and responsible driving. 38. You're driving along this road. The driver on the left is reversing from a driveway. What should you do? A. Drive through as you have priority. B. Move to the opposite side of the road. C. Sound your horn and be prepared to stop. D. Speed up and drive through quickly. Correct answer. C. Sound your horn and be prepared to stop. Explanation. White lights at the rear of a car show that the driver has selected a reverse gear. Sound your horn to warn the other driver of your presence and reduce your speed as a precaution. 39. Your doctor has given you a course of medicine. 
Why should you ask how it will affect you? A. Drugs make you a better driver by quickening your reactions. B. Some types of medicine can cause your reactions to slow down. C. The medicine you take may affect your hearing. D. You'll have to let your insurance company know about the medicine. Correct answer. B. Some types of medicine can cause your reactions to slow down. Explanation. Always check the label or information leaflet for any medication you take. The medicine might affect your driving. If you aren't sure, ask your doctor or pharmacist. 40. You find that you need glasses to read vehicle number plates at the required distance. When must you wear them? A. At all times when driving. B. Only in bad light or at night time. C. Only in bad weather conditions. D. Only when you think it's necessary. Correct answer. A. At all times when driving. Explanation. Have your eyesight tested before you start your practical training. Then, throughout your driving life, have checks periodically, as your vision may change. 41. What will affect your vehicle's stopping distance? A. The condition of the tires. B. The speed limit. C. The street lighting. D. The time of day. Correct answer. A. The condition of the tires. Explanation. Having tires correctly inflated and in good condition will ensure they have maximum grip on the road. How well your tires grip the road has a significant effect on your car's stopping distance. 42. Why is it particularly important to carry out a check on your vehicle before making a long motorway journey? A. Continuous high speeds increase the risk of your vehicle breaking down. B. Motorway service stations don't deal with breakdowns. C. The road surface will wear down the tires faster. D. You'll have to do more harsh braking on motorways. Correct answer. A. Continuous high speeds increase the risk of your vehicle breaking down. Explanation. Before you start your journey, make sure that your vehicle can cope with the demands of high-speed driving. You should check a number of things, the main ones being oil, water and tires. You also need to plan rest stops if you're making a long journey. 43. You lose your way on a busy road. What's the best action to take? A. Check a map and keep going with the traffic flow. B. Shout to other drivers to ask them the way. C. Stop at traffic lights and ask pedestrians. D. Turn into a side road, stop and check a map. Correct answer. D. Turn into a side road, stop and check a map. Explanation. It's easy to lose your way in an unfamiliar area. If you need to check a map or ask for directions, first find a safe place to stop. 44. When should you use hazard warning lights? A. When warning oncoming traffic that you intend to stop. B. When you're double parked on a two-way road. C. When your direction indicators aren't working. D. When your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. Correct answer. D. When your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. Explanation. Hazard warning lights are an important safety feature and should be used if you've broken down and are causing an obstruction. Don't use them as an excuse to park illegally. You may also use them on motorways to warn traffic behind you of danger ahead. 45. The road outside this school is marked with yellow zigzag lines. What do these lines mean? A. You may park on the lines when dropping off school children. B. You may park on the lines when picking up school children. C. You must stay with your vehicle if you park here. D. You mustn't wait or park your vehicle here at all. Correct answer. D. You mustn't wait or park your vehicle here at all. Explanation. Parking here would block other road users' view of the school entrance and would endanger the lives of children on their way to and from school. 46. When may the cost of your insurance come down? A. When you complete the Pass Plus scheme. B. When you don't wear glasses. 
C. When you pass the driving test for the first time. D. When you're under 25 years old. Correct answer. A. When you complete the Pass Plus scheme. Explanation. The cost of insurance varies with your age and how long you've been driving. Usually, the younger you are, the more expensive it is. Especially if you're under 25. Pass Plus provides additional training to newly qualified drivers. The scheme is recognized by many insurance companies. And taking this extra training could give you reduced insurance premiums, as well as improving your skills and experience. 47. You're driving a slow-moving vehicle on a narrow, winding road. What should you do? A. Give a left signal when it's safe for vehicles to overtake you. B. Keep well out to stop vehicles overtaking dangerously. C. Pull in when you can. To let following vehicles overtake. D. Wave following vehicles past you if you think they can overtake quickly. Correct answer. C. Pull in when you can. To let following vehicles overtake. Explanation. If you're driving a slow-moving vehicle along a narrow road, try not to hold up faster traffic. If you see vehicles following behind, pull over in a safe place and let the traffic pass before continuing. Don't wave other traffic past. This could be dangerous if you or they haven't seen any hazard that's hidden from view. 48. Your vehicle breaks down in a tunnel. What should you do? A. Stand in front of your vehicle to warn oncoming drivers. B. Stand in the lane behind your vehicle to warn others. C. Stay in your vehicle and wait for the police. D. Switch on hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. Correct answer. D. Switch on hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. Explanation. A broken down vehicle in a tunnel can cause serious congestion and danger to other road users. If your vehicle breaks down, get help without delay. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Then go to an emergency telephone to call for help. 49. It's a very windy day and you're about to overtake a cyclist. What should you do? A. Allow extra room. B. Keep close as you pass. C. Overtake very slowly. D. Sound your horn repeatedly. Correct answer. A. Allow extra room. Explanation. Cyclists and motorcyclists are very vulnerable in high winds. They can easily be blown well off course and veer into your path. Always allow plenty of room when overtaking them. Passing too close could cause a drought and unbalance the rider. 50. You're braking on a wet road. Your vehicle begins to skid. It doesn't have anti-lock brakes. What's the first thing you should do? A. Gently use the accelerator. B. Push harder on the brake pedal. C. Quickly pull up the handbrake. D. Release the foot brake. Correct answer. D. Release the foot brake. Explanation. If the skid has been caused by braking too hard for the conditions, release the brake. You may then need to reapply and release the brake again. You may need to do this a number of times. This will allow the wheels to turn and so some steering should also be possible.